Hey guys, Nadia here. Um, so funnily enough, I've actually recorded this video once and the audio in it did not work at all. It was just static. I don't really know what happened, but we are doing this again and I haven't figured out the problem with recording audio onto my camera. So I'm recording on a separate device and it's gonna work this time. So sorry that this video is a little bit later than Arlesia's, but we are here and that's what matters. So this is the sketchbook tour for um, the collab that I've been doing with Arlesia. If you follow us on Instagram, then you may have seen our posts. We've been posting the pieces that we're doing in the sketchbooks. Um, uh, and if you watched last week's video, um, then you saw the recording for the first piece and both of us kind of talked about what we used and the supplies and whatnot. So if you want to find out more and you haven't watched the first video of either of ours, I really recommend watching it because we both do explain kind of what the collab is about and uh, what materials we sent each other and whatnot. So I will also talk a little bit about my process for each piece. Um, I'm not going to go into super detail because I don't want this video to be too long. So. I'll just go over things a little bit and if you have questions at the end feel free to comment down below and I will answer as many as I can. Alright, now let's get started. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh goodness. Um, the cats are being really loud in the background and I hope you can't hear them. Okay, so this is the piece that the first video was about so you've already seen the process for this and you know a little bit about it. So I think we're just gonna move on from this piece. Um, this was prompt number two. The prompt was midnight, and I know this is red and it's not very midnight looking, <laughs> but the idea behind it was I did an illustration of a Korean myth of Kumiho. Um, she was said to be a fox who would turn into a beautiful woman or just something attractive and lure people out um, in order to kill and eat their flesh. So, not a very positive story, but it's something that's been on my mind a lot. Um, it is derivative of the original Chinese myth of the nine-tailed fox. Um, the Japanese myth of the nine-tailed fox was also derived from the Chinese one. So the Chinese one is kind of the original one, and the Japanese and the Koreans have their own take on it. If I believe as far as I understand and remember, the Korean one is the only one where Kumiho is actually evil. Um, and obviously, in the different cultures, they have different names. Kumiho is just the Korean one. For my process on this one, um, what I did is I took the watercolors Alicia sent me, and that's all I've been using in here, um, along with some inks outside of that, but I'll get to that. <laughs> I, I mainly used the red, which is a um, rose, rose door matter lake, and I mixed just a little bit of Naples yellow and turquoise with it to mute it a little bit. Um, and what I did with that color is I put it all in the background minus the trees, and I left the silhouette of the fox and the hair stuff <laughs> blank. Um, once the background was covered, I did a light wash of um, the red on the trees and the fox. And then I went into the background and used white pastel, and I just used this guy here, Faber Castell Pit Pastel, um, in that color. I believe it's just a white. That's what it looks like to me. But I used that, but because of the paint, it actually does pull up a little bit and it will turn the pastel kind of pinkish, um, so it won't be stark white. So what I recommend for that, if you're trying to get pastel over some kind of paint and the paint is kind of mixing with the pastel, is use some workable fixative. That's all I did. I used the Grumbacher workable fixative, sprayed it over that after I had all of my washes down and then I was able to get uh, a brighter white in the background. Otherwise, it's it was just a lot of layering with watercolor and I did use some ink and some black pastel to darken some of the things up. And for ink, I just used Daler Brownie FW in um, I used sepia 
and black. So, and I use more sepia than black. I just do, I'll do like two drops of this and one drop of the black. Um, super easy. It's just a lot of layering. And then of course, we all know I can't forget my gold ink. <laughs> so there's the gold detailing on that. Okay, and then the next piece was floral, and this is honestly my favorite piece out of the entire series. <laughs> I really, really like how it turned out, and this is actually a redraw for one of my um, Instagram art friends. She was celebrating 30,000 followers, which is so exciting. Um, her username is Cassiopeia. Um, her name is Isabel, and her work is super cute, and um, I'll probably put up the, her original somewhere around here so you can see a comparison. My piece is a lot different because I didn't keep the color scheme or anything, but the concept is hers and she is kind enough to let me make prints of this because people really love it and I want to be able to share it with you guys. So I will have prints very shortly once I open up my shop here soon. With this one, the process of it was, is there's not much to explain just because it's just layering. Um, I did use the Rose Door Matter Luke, again mixed with Naples Yellow and Turquoise to mute it a little bit. And I also mixed in the Moon Glow color, which is just that one right there, uh, to darken it up a little bit. And then I mixed Naples Yellow, Turquoise, and a little bit of the red back in to make a muted green color for the background. And again, just using black pastel and those inks to do kind of the background. Um, here's the gold detailing on that. Hopefully that's not too overexposed. It looks a little overexposed on my screen. Sorry if it is, but yeah. A super simple process again. Just lots of layering, lots going back and forth between layers and deepening everything up. So, really happy with this piece. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess we will move on to number four. So this page is a little bit different. This is my first time doing a sketchbook spread type of thing. Um, I was really stumped on the prompt nostalgia. I even called my best friend and was asking her, you know, what can I do with this? What is something that's going to fit my style? And she was trying to help me remember memories. And even though I had really, really good childhood, I have a difficult time remembering good memories versus bad memories. So I was having a difficult time remembering something that was like warm and fuzzy inside. But finally, right before I sat down to work on this, I remembered that whenever we'd visit Pennsylvania to visit my dad's side of the family, he would show me the maple seed pods and we would call them helicopters because when they fall off the trees, they spin like helicopter. Hel oh goodness, helicopters. <laughs> so they're super cool and they just seeing these make me smile because that is a good memory. Um, it was multiple times, but just knowing that my dad was, he's always been so good about just doing little things with his kids, and it means a lot, so. But this was the first study that I did, and then I did these in gold, and then I did this guy, which is just a dried maple leaf, not maple leaf, sorry, maple seed pod, and then I just did these from memory. These two were from memory and these were from reference. So I had a lot of fun with this. I feel like I should have added more to the sketchbook spread to kind of balance everything out because it looks kind of weird just to have things like right here, but it is what it is and it was my first one. So I am pretty happy with how this guy turned out. So last one is dreams. I had considered um, illustrating one of my previous dreams. Um, however, I was reading the dreams that I had written down and honestly, it was a little triggering. <laughs> I 
have had horrible dreams and I don't really know what's wrong with my brain and like where those ideas come from but anyway I was so tired I didn't want to put that much brain power into illustrating something because it would take a little bit to like, not get upset so I just did something that was kind of like we have dreams and we have nightmares and they kind of go hand in hand a lot of times so honestly I'm not a huge fan of how this piece turned out but it was I want to say midnight when I started it and then I started recording the video at 1.30 in the morning um, <laughs> so by this time I was just really tired and I wanted to be able to get the video on, on, out on time oh goodness I'm sorry that's my sister's cat <laughs> um, and I felt like it was going so well and then I imported everything onto my computer and the audio file was just static and I didn't know what to do I thought about re-recording it uh, last night slash this morning I guess technically uh, but it's like you know I'm just gonna go to sleep and Arlisha has been unbelievably patient and understanding with me and I just appreciate her so much and I'm very very grateful to have been able to do this collaboration with her um, many of you are probably here from her channel but if for some reason you don't know her channel or you know her I really recommend checking out her channel her Instagram and just talking with her she's an amazing person she's so nice and I am beyond blessed and just grateful for this time that I've gotten to get to know her better and to be able to do something really fun and exciting art wise and something that was pretty low pressure um, so thank you guys for watching the sketchbook tour I hope that you enjoyed it um, I guess normal end of the YouTube video type of thing thanks for watching and give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe maybe if you would like to <laughs> and I really appreciate you sticking to the end of the video and I will talk to you all soon bye